Hi, I'm a possum and I find garbage, and today's garbage is Cruella, the first movie to ever have a woman in it. So, yeah, Cruella is a prequel slash reboot to the 1961 animated film The 101 Dalmatians. And uh, the main character, the hero, is the villain from that movie who wanted to steal the puppies so she could skin them and make a coat. Yeah, so they're trying to take this character and turn her into some kind of uh, sympathetic and empowering feminist icon or something. You know, you know what's funny? While all of these Disney shills on Twitter are pretending like this movie is some kind of uh, empowering feminist triumph, did you know that Disney is screwing the lead costume designer for Cruella out of her royalties? And more to the point, you think these people care? So, the thing about Cruella, if it had nothing to do with 101 Dalmatians, it would just be a mediocre revenge movie. But this is a prequel, so it can't be divorced from that context. So it's totally fair to criticize it for being inconsistent with the established canon, since it's part of that story. And also because of that context, it's a movie that tries to make heroes out of these characters who steal pets so they can skin them to make coats. And there's no way around that. So, so you can make a kid's movie about a young John Wayne Gacy going to clown school and using his talents to defeat his bullies, but everyone would watch it with the knowledge that he grows up to become a serial killer in the back of their minds. That's Cruella. A lot of people have been kind of comparing Cruella to Joker because like, oh, they're both villain origin stories, so they're exactly the same. So Joker did XYZ, so why are you criticize Cruella for, for doing XYZ? They're exactly the same. <laughs> no, they're not. Saying Joker and Cruella are the same just because they're both villain origin stories is like saying Star Wars and Star Trek are the same because they both have spaceships. Joker is about the world's most pathetic man snapping after getting beat down by society one too many times and deciding to embrace insanity. Cruella is about a woman who becomes a fashion icon purely out of spite and ignores the fact that she's a narcissistic puppy killer. Joker doesn't try to convince us that Joker is a good person. It just shows us how a man can become a monster when he's treated like one for too long. Cruella tries to make an empowering girl boss feminist icon out of a character who steals puppies to make coats. The Joker, the character, gets a following accidentally when he kills three rich kids and then inadvertently starts a class war. And he literally says he wasn't trying to start a movement, but he goes along with it when he, brace, he embraces chaos, right? Cruella, on the other hand, gets a following because he dresses like Lady Gaga, okay? They're not the same. Uh, I guess I'm just going to talk about what happens in the movie now. So the movie starts with Cruella's birth. So the very first thing we see in the movie is Cruella's slimy ass, which I guess is symbolically appropriate. Within about 20 minutes of watching the movie, you're going to realize, Cruella, that this movie has nothing to do with 101 Dalmatians aside from, like, the names of the characters. Because they, they don't even get the time period right. Uh, so what we see, uh, like, the first, like, I don't know, 20 minutes of the movie or so is just uh, Cruella growing up in the 60s. Uh, we hear Cruella's voiceover say it's 1964. The original movie was made in 1961 based on a book that was written in like 1956 or something, and I assume it doesn't take place in the future. I guess Cruella's like just like 30 or 40 years younger now. Now I've heard a theory that they changed the timeline to make this version of Cruella coincide with the 90s remake, which took place in the 90s, right? But if that's the case, then it doesn't make any sense, because th that movie also has nothing all to do with this movie. Like, the, the events of both movies do not line up at all. So, I do not understand why they changed the time period. It makes no sense. Anyway, I guess uh, we see uh, Cruella as a baby. She's uh, her mom's walking her d around in like a stroller, and some nasty old lady sees her and like makes fun of her. I guess that's just to establish that ever since Cruella was born, people were like mistreating her. You know, so we feel sympathy for this poor, downtrodden, 
little girl who grows up to become a puppy skinner. So a few years later, we see Cruella. It's like a, she's like five or six years old, and she's talking to her mom. And her mom says something to the effect of, "Oh, that's rude. Uh, your name's Estella, not Cruella." So I guess Cruella's real name is Estella, right? When she, I, I guess, at some point later in her life, she changes her name to Cruella, like when she becomes evil. And I guess this is where she got the name. It was just some stupid joke. Like a stupid joke name that her mom called her when she was five. So, anyway, a few years later, again, uh, when she's like eight or nine, she's going to some kind of prep school. Because, as we all know, these impoverished, downtrodden children of single mothers always go to prep schools, right? So, she goes to a prep school, and the very first thing that happens is she gets bullied by these two boys. Because, of course, the bullies are, are boys, right? As we all know, girls never bully each other. Girls are awesome. It's only, you know, dirty, nasty, stinking boys who are ever mean to people. So, then we meet Anita. Because it was established in the original 101 Dalmatians that Cruella and Anita knew each other when they were kids in school. And even that kind of didn't make sense because Cruella looks like she's like 30 years older than Anita. But anyway, uh, I, I, I guess... At some point later in life, Anita decided to change her race or something. Uh, Cruella gets kicked out of school for fighting. And then while they're on their way somewhere, she and her mom stop at this mansion, which I assume is the same one that Cruella used as a hideout in the original movie. And for whatever reason, there's this big costume ball going on where everyone's dressed like it's the 1800s or something. So... Cruella's mom tells her to wait in the car while she goes into the mansion to talk to some lady. Then, for no particular reason, Cruella decides to just get out of the car and sneak into the mansion. And she ends up getting chased by these Dalmatians who chase her outside and then knock her mother off a cliff. So then the guards go looking for, for uh, Cruella, who, uh, remember, her name is Estella. So she runs and jumps into this truck that's passing by and falls through the roof and Somehow, this short fall causes her to lose consciousness. Sometime later, I guess Estella meets Jasper and Horace, who are also kids, and they become friends. Now, if you don't remember, Jasper and Horace are the two thugs that Cruella had steal the Dalmatians for her in the original movie. Yeah, the, the two bumbling idiot uh, thugs. Yeah, so, I never got the sense that they were friends or even respected each other on any level. I always just assumed she hired them to do her dirty work. But I guess, I guess they're f childhood friends now. So we cut to 10 years later and we got a montage of Cruella, Jasper, and Horace committing petty crimes. And even though it should, it's like 1974 now, it still looks like the 60s. I guess uh, thanks to Jasper breaking in and messing it with some paperwork, Cruella gets a job at some place called Liberty London, where her boss treats her like garbage and keeps refusing to give her promotions. Because again, men bad. One night, Cruella gets drunk and messes up a window display. Her boss finds her passed out in the display and fires her, but then the display is seen by some smug, unlikable fashion bitch that's just called the Baroness, who seems to think it's avant-garde or something and decides to hire her to come work for her, uh... Uh, I don't know, designer label or whatever, designing dresses for her. Cruella manages to impress the Baroness with her work, and then she goes to some dress shop and meets the, that gay character who all these articles were claiming was the first gay Disney character. He, he must be like the fifth or sixth first gay character Disney has had by now. This is one of those movies where almost every male character is portrayed as either a bumbling idiot or scumbag. We're like 40 minutes in now, and the only exceptions so far are the gay guy and Jasper. Which is ironic because Jasper was both incredibly stupid and evil in the original movie. But yeah, I, I guess he's like the only sympathetic male character in the movie aside from the gay guy. So, Cruella notices the Baroness wearing her mother's necklace. Uh, I forgot to mention that her mother had like this big stupid necklace with a, like a big ruby in it or something. Without saying she recognizes it, she asks her where she got it, and it turns out the Baroness is this woman, uh, is the woman her mom was talking to at the ball where the Dalmatians pushed her off a cliff. 
So Corolla decides she wants to steal her mom's necklace back. And she keeps doing this thing where she goes to this fountain to, like, talk to her dead mom. I guess because she doesn't have a grave or something. So instead of going to her grave, she goes to the fountain. I don't know why she didn't die at the fountain. She fell off a cliff. I guess she landed in water, and the logic is, well, there's water in the fountain, so I'll talk to her. By that logic, she should be, she could be talking to her in a toilet. This movie keeps doing this annoying thing where it keeps playing contemporary music. I guess because it's trying to be like Joker. Except in Joker, whenever contemporary music plays, you get the sense that he, that Joker is listening to it in his head because he's crazy. So it makes sense within the logic of the movie. It's not just some tacky thing they're doing to evoke the time period. So anyway, Cruella decides she wants to steal her mom's necklace back. So she, Dasper, and Horace plan to break into the Baroness's safe during a ball she's throwing. And Jasper and Horace dress up as exterminators so they can sneak around while Cruella creates a distraction. So Cruella, remember, she, the Baroness knows her as Estella, right? So she goes to the ball in disguise so she doesn't know that, she doesn't know that Estella is Cruella, right? So she goes to the ball wearing this white cloak, which she sets on fire and it burns away to reveal this flashy red dress underneath, which she found at the gay guy's store earlier. The cloak just kind of burns away in a second like it was made of flash paper or something. And Cruella is just totally unscathed, doesn't burn her or anything. You know, like magic. I should point out that there are no fantasy elements in this movie up until this point. Uh, up until now, it's been pretty much grounded in reality and played straight and realistic. So when this happens, it's just kind of jarring and comes across as kind of stupid. Anyway... Horace dresses up his dog named Wink, because he has one eye, as a giant rat and pretends to chase him around to make his way up to the safe while Jasper disables the security cameras. Now, while disabling the cameras, Jasper finds a bunch of real rats and decides to bring them with him into the kitchen for some reason and puts them on a platter. And he brings this platter out into the ballroom and when he lifts up the lid, all the rats go scattering around and a big panic ensues. So, Cruella uses the ensuing chaos as a distraction to steal the necklace. Now, this is not at all how they planned this. It just is just happened to work out in their favor. Anyway, I guess during the chaos, the Baroness realizes that a necklace has been stolen and sees Estella's dog running away with it. Yeah, yeah, she has a dog, like a little stupid brown dog. So, she pulls out a dog whistle and summons the Dalmatians to chase the dog. Now this is when Cruella realizes the Baroness trained her Dalmatians to push her mom off a cliff. And then we get like a flashback. So during the chase, one of the Dalmatians picks up the necklace and accidentally swallows it, right? Everyone runs outside and Cruella hotwires a car resembling the one she drove in the original movie. And she, Jasper, and Horace escape. Uh, during the chase, uh, Cruella says something like, I don't know how to drive. But I guess apparently she knows how to hotwire a car? Okay. Anyway, they, they escape. The police don't chase them or anything. They just steal this car and get away. And then, uh, I guess, realizing the Baroness killed her mother, Cruella decides to get revenge. The next morning, Cruella do doesn't tell Jasper and Horace that she has a plan so much as she simply commands them to steal the Baroness's Dalmatians, knowing one of them has the necklace inside it. So the, she proceeds to talk down to her only friends, treating them like henchmen, in much the same way she was kind of mistreating them in the original movie. I guess Cruella goes to Anita, who works for some kind of gossip magazine, as like a photographer or something, to try to get her to join her on a re her revenge scheme. So I guess at this point, this is when Corella decides to say, Oh, I'm not Estella anymore. Estella's dead and gone. I'm Cruella. Ooh. Yeah, it's just, just look at that. That's how she got her name. Jasper and Horace go to the dog groomer where the Baroness's Dalmatians are, and they send in the, the little dog Wink to chase him out. So they'll chase him outside, because for, for some reason the Dalmatians just want to chase Wink. I don't know. But they chase Wink outside, and Jasper and Horace trap him in a van and drive away. And it works because the Dalmatians, the, the groomers, didn't have the Dalmatians tied up or anything, you know, like a real dog groomer would. So while Jasper and Horace are doing that, I guess uh, Cruella's plan 
is to upstage the Baroness at all of her shows, so she gets the gay guy, his name's Artie by the way, to help her make these crazy outfits. Cruella, at the beginning of the movie, like when she was a kid, she dyed her hair red, right? Shortly after meeting Jasper and Horace. But once she has to go to the ball to steal the necklace, she has her normal black and white hair that she was born with. And I was wondering how she managed to get the dye out of her hair. But then it turns out she was actually wearing a wig this whole time. Okay? So she dyes her hair red, and then she starts wearing a wig that that's red. Uh, also, I always thought Cruella had like white hair because she was old and just dyed half of it black as some kind of like fashion thing. But I guess she was actually just born that way. Like she has Wardenburg syndrome or something, I don't know. So I guess Cruella puts on her red wig and goes back to the Baroness's studio in her Estella persona. And the Baroness says she needs a bunch of dresses for a big fashion show she's putting on. We get a montage of Cruella constantly upstaging the Baroness at events with the help of Jasper and Horace who, for whatever reason, always seem to go unrecognized. And Anita keeps writing articles about it, so the Baroness gets all pissed off. Now, the Baroness wants to sue Cruella, but her lawyer, Roger, says they don't have a case, so she fires him. Now, I didn't realize right away, but uh, this guy, Roger, is actually supposed to be the Roger from the original movie. The guy who owns Pongo. I didn't realize it because he looks nothing at all like him, and uh, he doesn't... He's her lawyer in this movie, even though he wasn't... Like, he had no relation to... I, I don't know. So... I guess, uh... Since the Baroness still doesn't know that Estella is Cruella, Cruella is able to have Horace deliver a big crate full of these weird bead things to the studio, and somehow nobody recognizes Horace as the guy who's always with Cruella whenever she upstages the Baroness. So Cruella sews these bead things into the world's ugliest dress, and the Baroness decides to use it in her fashion show and steal credit for it. Later that night, Cruella has Jasper and Horace stage a break-in, so the Baroness will get paranoid and put the dress in her vault. I guess uh, Jasper confronts Cruella about her acting like a huge bitch to him and Horace, and even though she's completely un unapologetic, they decide to just continue simping for her. So, during the Baroness's fashion show, her guys open the vault and Thousands of moths come flying out, causing a panic. And it turns out the beads Cruella made the dress out of were actually little moth cocoons. And they ate all the dresses in the vault. So, I guess Cruella had this convoluted plan to sabotage the Baroness's business by ruining all of her dresses. And it, uh, this totally banked on the assumption the Baroness would like this booby trap dress so much that she would put it in her vault with her other dresses. And it just so happened to work out. Like, Cruella could not have guessed that the Baroness would look at this ugly dress made of bug cocoons and would decide to put it in her vault. But it just happened to work out in her favor. So while that's going on, Cruella somehow managed to put on this big rock concert. And even though it's like two blocks down the street, the Baroness is able to look out her window and see Cruella wearing a Dalmatian spotted coat and believes that she made it out of her dog's fur. Because remember, she stole her dogs. So then the police show up and chase Avon away from the concert because this is the UK and fun is illegal. The Baroness looks out her window and actually sees Jasper and Horace and this time, she actually recognizes them, even though she's only seeing them from behind in a big crowd and they're like really far away. I guess this time, she recognizes them. So I guess the Baroness and her goons follow Jasper and Horace to Cruella's hideout and tie her up and set the place on fire as they turn Jasper and Horace into the police. And they actually play that smile even though your heart is breaking song like in The Joker. But of course, it's a female rendition. It doesn't even make sense. But what is the thematic significance of Smile Even Though Your Heart Is Breaking during a scene where she's about to burn to death? It's stupid. But then somebody comes in and rescues her, but her vision's like blurring or something, so she can't see who it is. 
So she wakes up on a couch and it turns out this bald dude who works for the Baroness rescued her. He reveals that her mother's necklace is actually has a little key hidden in it, which opens a box with her birth certificate inside. Big twist, it turns out the Baroness was actually Cruella's real mother all along. And now Cruella is the rightful heir to the now dead ba the, the, the Baron's fortune. Because the Baron's dead, right? So the Baroness told Bald Guy to kill Cruella when she was a baby. But Bald Guy gave her to the woman who Cruella thought was her mother all this time. And she raised her, right? So I, I guess Cruella, she has to take this all in. So she goes outside and just steals the mailman's motorcycle. And remember, she, d she doesn't know how to drive a car. But I guess she can drive a motorcycle. So she goes to the fountain to talk to her dead fake mother again and gives this long, mono uh, this long monologue in this one long continuous shot, which I guess is supposed to impress me, but it doesn't because I saw Russian Ark, and now your long takes don't impress me anymore. So, piss off, Hollywood. We cut to Jasper and Horace in a holding cell at the police station, but then Cruella, wearing a fake mustache, crashes a garbage truck through the front of the police station, Terminator style, and creates a distraction, so wink the dog can bring Jasper and Horace uh, a, a, like a nail file or something so they can break out. So Jasper and Horace escape while Cruella leads the police on a short and not very impressive car chase. And she picks them up and takes them back to Bald Guy's house and explains that the Baroness is her real mom and they need to stop her from hunting her down like when she realizes she's still alive. So Cruella goes to Artie's store wearing a fake mustache, presumably so nobody knows she's still alive. But it's apparently not a very good disguise, even by the logic of the movie, because Artie recognizes her right away. So she convinces him to help her with her, with the promise of fabulousness and mayhem. This movie smells like glue and crayons. So Cruella and the gang start making a bunch of dresses and deliver them to all the high society women in London, because the the Baroness is having another ball, and they intend to crash it. So Cruella and Jasper talk on the roof of this building, and then uh, we get this moment where you get you kind of get the sense that I guess it's hinting that Jasper is supposed to be like a love interest, and it's kind of weird when you think about like how they relate to each other in the original movie. But anyway, Horace shows up, and he says he fixed up the car they stole earlier. He, he noticed uh, it's called the. Uh, uh, Devil. And then Jasper says, it's pronounced Deville, mate. And Cruella says, Deville, I like it. And I, I actually said F off out loud. So the Baroness obviously knows that Estella is Cruella now, right? But she doesn't know that Bald Guy is working with her now, so he's in on the big plan. Now, fearing that Cruella might show up, the Baroness tells her guards to look out for her. They tackle several women with her hair, but it turns out the women are showing up to the ball in the outfits Cruella's gang made for her, remember? They made all these dresses and shipped it out to the high society women. So they're all showing up basically dressed as Cruella, right? They all believe that the Baroness is like doing some kind of tribute party for Cruella because I guess they don't realize that Cruella and the Baroness are enemies. Even though there was Anita wrote all these articles where it's that talk about how, uh, Cruella is so awesome, and the Baroness sucks. <sighs> With all these women dressed up like her, Cruella is able to sneak around the mansion. She manages to snatch the Baroness's dog whistle while Jasper, Horace, and Artie, and the bald guy, trap the guards in some room. Then Cruella pulls out a duffel bag that I assume bald guy stashed for her somewhere, and puts on her red wig to dress up as Estella. And then the Baroness's Dalmatians start freaking out and run to the door where the Baroness sees Cruella standing by the cliff where her mom fell. Now it turns out Cruella used the dog whistle to get the Dalmatians' attention. So the Baroness sicks her dogs on her, but she just tells them to sit. I guess because while she had the dogs, she trained them to, to obey her, I don't know. And while that's going on, Jasper and the others, disguised as guards, tell Avon in the mansion that the Baroness wants them to meet her outside. So all the guests start going outside, right? Now Cruella reveals to the Baroness that she's her daughter. And then the Baroness does that thing where the villain tries to convince the hero to join them. You know, cliche villain thing number 483. 
And she's saying all this all while failing to notice that there's a huge crowd gathering right behind her. So the Baroness goes up to Corella like she's gonna hug her, but then she pushes her off a cliff. And uh, she hears Avon gasp, and so she turns around and realizes Avon just saw her commit a murder. So then the Baroness gets arrested while Corella narrates her over her own funeral. But then it turns out she's still alive. Estella, being the rightful heir, signs all of her wealth over to Cruella in her will. So Cruella basically just faked her own death to get the Baroness's money. So we see in a flashback that Cruella actually had her dress rigged to open up like a parachute, having evidently plans for the Baroness to push her off a cliff. I, I actually laughed out loud when her dress turned into a parachute. What, what if this didn't... What, what if the Baroness just shot her or something? You plan to fake your own murder or frame the Baroness for murdering you. That would have failed if she did, she did anything other than push you off a cliff. Like, what, what if the dogs actually just mauled her to death? So uh, the Baroness goes to prison and the movie ends with Cruella getting this big mansion and the three Dalmatians, which I'm assuming are the same ones who pushed her mother off a cliff ten years earlier. So that's kind of weird. And then there's this uh, mid credit sequence where Roger and Anita both get the Dalmatians Pongo and Perdita as puppies from Cruella. Now, earlier, Horace commented that one of the Dalmatians that, you know, they got from the Baroness, you know, looked like it put on a little weight, right? Implying it was pregnant. So uh, this also implies that Pongo and Perdita are siblings. But before we have time to contemplate the implied ins. The scene ends with Roger singing the song from the original movie. You know, the, the Cruella de Vil, Cruella de Vil, if nothing, she doesn't scare you, nothing will, whatever, however it goes. Uh, she's, he's singing that song, which doesn't make any sense because this scene is right after he gets Pongo and before he meets Anita, right? He, in, in the original movie, he didn't write that song until after he married Anita, right? It's, <laughs> So that that that's 101 Dalmatians. It makes no sense. It's stupid. It doesn't make sense within the context of the continuity of 101 Dalmatians, and it also doesn't make sense within its own self-contained context if you decide to ignore the fact that's meant to be a prequel. Holy crap! What a dumb movie. All right, that's all I have to say. Like, comment, subscribe, support me on Patreon. I'm done.